What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here, and today we're going to be comparing the Nike Vomero 15 to the Nike Pegasus 37. So welcome back to another video and as I said today we're going to be comparing the Vomero 15 to the Pegasus 37. One shoe I wasn't a particular fan of and another one that I'm really beginning to enjoy but actually they look relatively similar on the outside so we'll dive in and we'll go through the pros and cons of both of these shoes and I'll give you my final verdict at the end. As always with all comparison videos this is not a technical overview this will just simply be pros and cons if you're interested in more technical information on either of these two shoes make sure you head back onto the channel so Search up Pegasus 37 first impressions, Vomero 15 first impressions. You can find out, hopefully, all you need to know in those videos. So without further ado, we'll dive in and we'll start with the Pegasus 37. If you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and we'll get rolling. So let's kickstart things with the Pegasus 37. The shoe in this comparison video that I wasn't a massive, massive fan of. Started to come to life towards the end for me, but mediocre, average, mm, bordering on good at best. Now this shoe for me kind of highlights is the epitome of what is wrong for me with Nike at the moment and that is the fact I personally hate React midsole. Let me explain why if you're new here. I'm a UK size 13 so my feet are relatively big and React goes crazy heavy when you get up to my size. I remember speaking to many people saying their Nova Blast, their 1080s and their Pegasus 37s all weighed in and around the same. And some of you said the Nova Blast and the 1080s weighed slightly more than the Pegasus. But for me in my size, Nova Blast 1080 version 10, 346 grams. This thing, 375 grams or 13.2 ounces. So React really does go like a brick when you get it up into my size. It is a 24 millimeter stack in the heel, 14 in the forefoot. 10 millimeter heel to toe drop and I did indeed go true to size. Now as I said this is the epitome of what for me is wrong with Nike at the moment. I love the top half of the majority of Nike shoes to be honest with you. They fit my foot shape beautifully. It's what they put on the bottom that just goes wrong and for me what they've got a little bit better, a little bit more right going in the right direction with the Nemero which we'll talk about very very shortly. So what do I like about this shoe? I like the relatively plush heel counter area. For a daily trainer, I'm looking for that comfort. It feels good. The tongues always work well for me on Nike shoes. They're a bit of an angle, so they slant off to the side. They wrap nicely around your ankle. The laces were a little bit short on this shoe, but really nothing to grumble too much about. These extra bits of fabric here on the eyelet chain, just something or nothing really. But you know what? They could have done away with them. Just simple holes in there would have been absolutely fine. But no problem with the lockdown again. And actually what I do like, but it is quite a common trait with some Nike shoes that I've been trying, is that the toe box is relatively shallow in these shoes. Not tight, it just sits nicely on top of your foot. So, so although you have wiggle room from a width perspective, it does the material sits nicely on the top of your foot. And it feels really good. The upper material in this, I think it's a dual layer, uh, dual layer mesh, I think. I haven't done my research, but it looks like it. If you can see it, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. You can see a very fine material over the top of a layer underneath it. And it was nice. I've got to be honest with you, that whole top half package of this shoe is nice. But the part that isn't, as I said, is the React midsole. And for me, disappointingly, the airbag that was placed in the forefoot. There was a big thing made with the Pegasus 37 that we're going to be having an airbag in the forefoot. It's why I tried it. I didn't really want to try it because I'd had some negative uh, experiences with the React midsole. We had the React Myler, the Zoomfly 3, neither of which I was a massive fan of. As I said, React just goes crazy heavy when you get to my size. But I thought the airbag might break things up a bit, might make it feel a little bit more responsive and a little bit less like a brick. And it started to towards the end of the 100 miles that I put into this shoe. And even by the end of it, it wasn't a particularly enjoyable experience. It was just a little bit more bearable than what it had been. So lacing it up straight away the first couple of rounds, I was extremely disappointed. It felt very, very, I could kind of feel the airbag, but it really wasn't doing a lot. 
but it started to break in after around 30, 40 miles. And I started to get a little bit more squish and a little bit more pop off as I progressed through the miles in this shoe. And to be honest with you, that's about it. I mean, in terms of how good it is, I can't give it high praise. The top half is great. The bottom half isn't so good. Let's move on to the Vomero. So let's shift our attention to this beauty, the shoe in this comparison that I do like and I am really digging, enjoying, but it's heavier. Let's give you a couple of quick stats for you. UK size 13, true to size, absolutely perfect. 387 grams, I finally weighed it. So it's 12 grams heavier than the Pegasus 37 or 13.7 ounces. 26 millimeter stack height in the heel, 16 in the forefoot, 10 millimeter heel to toe drop and a bigger airbag. I think it's double the size of the Pegasus and that's where they've got this right. Not to mention the fact that it does not use React foam. Again, another big bonus. So we'll go through the pros and cons, but quickly I'll show you where some of that weight has uh, been added. I think the heel counter area is even more plush than the Pegasus, which is fine because it's a kind of a daily trainer, um, comfort, comfort shoe, I should say. So you're gonna expect a little bit more comfort. That's fine, so very thick in and around the heel Achilles area. Not to mention we have this big plastic heel cup here just to add a little bit of support, a bit of rigidity in and around the back. The tongue though, as I said, is very similar. Thin at the top here, a bit of extra material, thin at the top, and then the padding kicks in as we hit the laces. Uh, where this differs from the eyelet chain, laces feel very similar, by the way, to the Peg 37, if not very much the same. But we don't have those extra flaps of material we're using. It's not flywire, but something similar to flywire. Now, I used to struggle with flywire in the shoes I had, but um, this doesn't stretch as much as the flywire. Does. I used to find the flywire stretched a bit and my foot would come loose. This has been okay so far, so far. We haven't put as many runs in it, but so far, so good. A nice breathable upper here. Um, you see ventilation holes across the top. Again, a different kind of upper to the Peg 37, but again, it's still a very comfortable upper. And that shallow toe box, once again, no problem with width because I have a wider foot, but sits nicely on the top of my foot. So once again, just like the majority of Nike shoes, top half, absolutely spot on. But the bottom half is where, in my opinion, they've got this shoe a little bit more right. So it doesn't use React, it feels a lot more of a softer, spongier foam. Some of you guys put in the first impressions video what it was, I think it was SPO2 or SFO2, some technical term. I think some of you said it was a foam that was used in a joyride which you know I haven't done that much investigation on because I still can't find the official line, but the majority of you were saying that. And not to mention that, but we have a nice bigger airbag in the forefoot, which from the off, I noticed no requirement for a break in. I literally put this on, walked out the door, started running and smiled. And that is a good sign. I felt it was kind of like that relief of, oh, I finally paid full price for a Nike shoe and I'm getting bang for my buck. You know, it's a daily trainer. It's gonna do easy and steady and moderate miles. But it's really not gonna do a lot more. Long runs, yep, yeah, absolutely fine if you're going easy. It's certainly not a speed day shoe at the weight it is. And it's certainly not one of those poppy shoes that's gonna get you up on your feet, but it does provide the comfort that I was hoping the Pegasus 37. And then we've got Zoom X in the heel, which I was kind of really pleased with in the beginning. And now I'm starting to think, well, what's the point in putting your most highest wearing, softest foam in the heel? What's the purpose of that? I don't know if it's, I guess, for people for heel striking. I was trying to sit back on my heels as I was going down some hills more recently. And I really did notice the cushioning in the heel counter area. It does actually feel really nice. But for me as a midfoot striker, it's pretty useless back there, to be honest with you. But the main bulk of the foam that they are using to surround this airbag, which as I said, is double the size of what's in the Peg 37, is really, really comfortable. And I have to be honest with you, like the Peg 37, we've got a top, which gets a thumbs up and the bottom on the peg which got the thumbs down but this thing gets the thumbs up. So final conclusions, you know which one I prefer. Let me just show you very quickly, as opposed to the Pegasus, where you saw, make sure that doesn't drop, where you saw that we've got some grooves and cutouts in the shoe. One thing I just forgot to show you then was the outsole on the Vomero, complete full rubber covering. So again, that's gonna be where some of the weight is added. But final conclusions, as I said, the Vomero is obviously my preference over the Peg, a very standard me mediocre shoe, something that is enjoyable, this thing. This is a solid six or seven out of 10. It doesn't blow my, you know, it, it doesn't blow my mind with how good it is but it's solid and I'm happy to pay the price that I have which is full price 
for this shoe. I think whenever you pick up a shoe, you've got to ask yourself, am I happy with it? Like I've paid full price. Is it delivering what I want it to deliver? Which it does. And would I buy multiple iterations of this shoe if they were going to be prepared to enhance it? And I would. I really do enjoy it. It's a solid daily trainer that I would go easy, long runs, moderate miles in, which I've just said. The Peg 37 sadly is not. Now, this surprisingly feels lighter in hand than this, despite the fact that this is heavier than this. And I think that's where this thing does it well, is it's got the weight distribution so great. One of the things I hated about the Zoom Fly 3 and the Mylar is that the bottom felt so heavy. They just feel bottom heavy with the React midsole. So what I'd love to see is something like this become this, because this is their daily trainer. This is their staple shoe in their lineup that's been going for years. And this is better than this, in my opinion. So it'd be great to translate what they've done with the Venero. In terms of the midsole, I'd love to see them lose this React and use this foam in here, because I think this would really win the hearts back over as some of the diehard Nike fans that have kind of gone off the boil with them because they're disappointed with last year releases and then what we could do with this thing is kind of streamline it a bit and just do something a little bit different i kind of put my foot in this and the first thought was this is exactly what the pegasus 37 should have been it shouldn't have been this it should have been this so i have to be honest with you yes this is 105 pounds i think it is this is 130 pounds but i'd much rather pay extra money to have this so there we go. Those are my thoughts on the Pegasus 37 versus the Vomero 15. I hope all of that made sense. But of course, as always, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Super excited to see actually what happens with the Vomero 15 because I've now seen rumours that actually they're going to ditch a worldwide release and move straight on to the 16 and the 15 is just purely going to be released in the UK and a few other countries, which I find really, really interesting. And I've heard rumours once again because I've seen a picture of the Vomero 16 floating around on Instagram that it might be a summer release who knows it'd be great to find out more on that I guess we'll need to sit tight and see what happens and I'm also keeping my eye on the Invincible another Nike shoe that does not use react uh, react foam you guys know I'll try any shoe as long as it doesn't have react in it so I'm keen to see what that's all about keep our fingers crossed that we can get that at some point soon. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Until then.